Are you frustrated or stuck with your painting? I'm Louise Fletcher, abstract painter, and boy have I been there. Not all that many years ago, I felt completely stuck with my art. I wanted to create exciting abstract landscapes, but I had no idea how to do it. I thought that the people who did it well had some special gift that I hadn't been given. Most of all, I thought they'd been born with a special talent that I hadn't been born with. At the time, I was making these detailed pen and ink drawings and people liked those. So I made those for a while. And then I started to paint cows. I like cows. I did a few cows as a hobby. Somebody said, oh, I really like that. Can I buy it? And off I went painting cows. I basically did whatever I thought other people wanted. And I thought that would be rewarding. And in a way it was. I made something, somebody liked it. They paid me money for it. I made another one, someone else liked it. They paid me money. So far, so good. But deep down, that wasn't what I wanted to do. And I knew there was more inside me. I just didn't know how to get to it. So I just felt stuck. I was good at drawing in ink. I was good at painting cows. But what I really wanted to do was to make abstract landscapes in acrylics and when I tried the results were a million miles away from what I wanted. What I imagined painting at the time were things like this or things like this but what I was actually making was this. Ouch. I became so discouraged that I stopped painting for a while but I wish I'd known that there was actually nothing wrong with me. I wish I'd known that all I needed to do was to keep working, to get more in touch with myself and to find a good few good people who could help me. You see, I believe that the artist we're meant to be is already inside us. You were born with that artist inside you. There are clues in your current work that point the way to where you're supposed to be going, to the paintings that you're supposed to be making. Those clues might be the colours you choose or the subject matter, or the way you applied paint in one tiny corner of the painting and something in it just felt good. I don't know where those clues lie for you, but I do know this. You find them in the places that feel the best. What I mean by that is that your soul, or you can call it your intuition, or that deeper part of yourself, whatever you want to call it, that part of you already knows what to do. You are getting in the way. You are thinking and worrying and analysing and stressing and expecting and wanting. And you are looking at a failed painting and making it mean something about you. So that painting's crap, therefore I'm crap, I have no talent, I should just go back to baking cakes. Wait, that might be my internal voice, but you have your own, I'm sure you do. And you may have other voices layered on top of your voice. The remembered voices of parents who told you that this was never a viable way to make a living and if you did try it, you'd have to produce a lot of paintings just in order to pay the bills. Or the dismissive voices of a spouse, partner or family member who doesn't understand what you're doing or why you want to do it. But somewhere buried under that huge pile of expectations and dismissive comments and remembered admonishments and self-criticism, somewhere under there is you. The real you, the artist, the one who knows what to do. So how do we get to the bottom of that pile and find out who we really are? I do not claim to have got there myself, but I am a lot closer than I was. There's a lot more of me in the paintings that I make now than there was three or four years ago when I was making those cows. And I think there were three keys to how I got here. One, I kept showing up. If the clues are in the work that we've already made, we need to keep making more work in order to follow the clues. So keeping showing up even when the work's disappointing is the most important thing that I did. Two, I started to pay attention to myself. Not something that I had done much of like many women. I started to really pay attention. What did I love? What did I respond to? I remember someone saying that they didn't like being on the moors because there are no trees and it's not it doesn't have a lovely cozy warm feeling and I thought oh but that's what I love about the moors so not everybody likes that so what do you love in real life what do you love in other people's art even if you don't love your own 
What is it that you love? Don't just say, I love that person's work. Why? What is it that you love about that? I discovered I liked abstract landscapes. Why? And which abstract landscapes? And why those ones? What was it about those? And in doing that, I started to dig in and discover, well, I love colour. I love a feeling of emotion in a work, which means it's usually looser. I love texture. I like layers. You start to build up a picture of what it is that you respond to. And if you respond to it in someone else's work, That's telling you that it belongs in your work, not in the same way. I'm not talking about copying, but it's telling you that's part of you that needs to come out of you in your own way. And number three, I found good teachers. And I had taken lots of workshops and usually they were fairly prescriptive. So you paint like the teacher and then you produce something at the end and I never carried on with anything after those classes because it didn't appeal to me. But I was lucky enough in a fairly short period of time to run across three people whose generous and open way of teaching opened up doors for me. There was Leslie Birch, an artist from who lives in Yorkshire, England. Leslie had a workshop where she shared her approach to play and experimentation with all kinds of materials. And that just opened up all these doors for me. Suddenly I realized there were there could be happy accidents and chance and you could play and you could try things out. That was a revelation to me. There was Alice Sheridan, who now is my podcast co-host, but who at the time I didn't know, but who I discovered online just generously sharing snippets of her artist life and her working process with anybody who wanted to watch free of charge on Instagram. I think I found her on Instagram, but she was also on Facebook. And her no-nonsense, not pretentious, just generous way of talking about being an artist gave me a glimpse of a chance that that might be a life that I could have. And finally, there was Nicholas Wilton, an American artist who I was introduced to through Alice, whose online CVP 12-week intensive art course literally gave me four years of art college in 12 weeks and opened up all of the doors to me and gave me an education that still continues to keep giving three years on. So those three teachers, on top of working hard and I'm thinking more about myself, unlocked this world of creativity to me and unlocked myself, really. So look up each of those people. You can find them all online and sign up for whatever they're offering if you can do it. I think Leslie only teaches in-person workshops, but you never know in the future she might change that. And if you're watching this in January 2020 or February 2020, Get yourself signed up for Nicholas Wilton's free workshop, which he runs once a year, only once a year for 10 days. And it is, it opened up worlds for me, even without me taking his longer paid course. The free course was just like, wow, I can't believe all this stuff. So do sign up for that. I've put a link with this video so that you don't miss it. If you are later you're watching this video later then that that link will take you to a waiting list page and i will be sure to let you know when you can do that course again so if you're frustrated with your work i want you to take my story as an inspiration that person who painted that muddy confused abstract landscape a few years ago is now working full-time as an artist is teaching others in online courses is co-hosting an art podcast. Look us up if you haven't heard of us, Art Juice. And most importantly, I am excited and thrilled to find my work developing and unfolding in new ways all the time. Something that now seems to happen without me driving it. It just seems as long as I show up, things happen. Some days are good, some days are bad, but things keep unfolding. And that's the best part of all of this. If I can go from this to this, so can you. Your before and after will look very different to mine. You may not even like my after, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you find out what your after is. You may want to make delicate ethereal abstracts. You may want to paint highly detailed representational pieces. You might want to make some combination of the two. I don't know what your art future looks like, but your soul does. Let it find its way. One thing I know for sure, you have magic inside you. You really do. See you again soon. 
And if you'd like to see more videos like this, just hit subscribe to stay in touch. Yeah.